Hello everyone, so in this video we will be seeing how to conduct a one sample t-test using jump. We will also be using the t-test animator in order to understand the p-values and the t-ratios. So the data set that I have here is a film thickness obtained from 100 different samples. So in order to do the t-test, you first create the histogram uh, using the distribution platform uh, from the analyze menu. and uh, then uh, in order to conduct the t-test uh, you can go to the rectangle option and then say test mean here you enter the hypothesis mean value in this case it's 7.594 and if we have the true standard deviation of the population you can enter it here uh, in that case jump would do a z-test instead of a t-test however in this case i don't have the true standard deviation so i'm going to leave it blank and also if your data is not normally distributed then you have the option to do a non-parametric test which is the Wilcox on signed rank test. However in this particular example I am going to leave it to the default settings and say ok. So now uh, you can see that jump has performed the uh, uh, one sample t-test and under the test mean uh, you can see that uh, there is the hypothesis value the value that we entered before. Actual estimate is nothing but the sample mean. Uh, and uh, uh, df is the degrees of freedom which is number of samples 100 minus 1 and uh, standard deviation is nothing but the standard deviation of these particular uh, set of samples uh, and under the t-test you can see that uh, jump is showing the test statistic and also the three p-values now let me quickly switch over to another slide where uh, I try to explain what this means so usually when you are doing hypothesis testing, you have uh, a null hypothesis. In this case, uh, the mean film thickness is equal to 7.594. However, when you are doing hypothesis testing, you always have uh, two hypotheses. Uh, one is a null hypothesis and the other one is the alternate hypothesis. And the reason you have the alternate hypothesis is because if you decide to reject the null hypothesis, then that means you are accepting the alternate hypothesis. Now, when you are doing hypothesis testing, you use the p-values in order to determine whether uh, you are uh, rejecting the null hypothesis or uh, you are uh, failing to reject the null hypothesis. And the general rule of thumb is that uh, when your p-value is greater than 0 0.05, then you fail to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, the reason you fail to reject the null hypothesis is because your evidence against H0 is weak. If your p-value on the other hand is less than 0 0.05, then you reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternate hypothesis. This means that uh, your evidence against H0 is strong. Now let me switch over to the jump window and here uh, you can see that the p-value uh, is uh, 0 0.2216. This means uh, your evidence uh, for rejecting the null hypothesis uh, is weak. So, uh, uh, so here in this case uh, you are failing to reject the null hypothesis. Now let's also open the t-test animator from the rectangle option here. Uh, you can say uh, uh, p-value animation. And in this menu, uh, you can actually, this is a graphic where uh, you can play around uh, to see what happens. So here, over here, you can see how the T-ratio, the standard error and the P-value change. Uh, in general, uh, when your hypothesis and the uh, uh, mean value move far apart, um, you can see that uh, the T-ratio goes up uh, and uh, your uh, P-value goes down. And this is when your uh, uh, mean value is uh, smaller than your uh, hypothesis value. Now when you move to the other side, uh, let's say uh, 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 when your uh, hypothesis value and the mean value come closer and closer, uh, you can see that the T-ratio becomes smaller and smaller and your P-value goes higher and higher. Now when your hypothesis value becomes smaller than your uh, uh, mean value, uh, you can see that uh, your uh, uh, T ratio uh, becomes positive from negative and has a similar uh, change. So when your hypothesis value becomes smaller compared to your uh, mean value, you can again see that the T value uh, T ratio goes up and your uh, P value uh, keeps going down.